Assalamualaikum, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today we're going to talk about raising strong children, okay, which is our future generations. Now, as a parent myself, you know, um, I get it. You know, I totally understand that bringing up children in this era uh, is very heavy, you know, when it comes to the responsibilities, right? You know, the first concern of a Muslim parents like us, you know, uh, wherever we may be, you know, uh, we have to be holding on to the teaching of Islam and bringing up our children by teaching them uh, to stick to the right path, right? So, you know, uh, likewise, Muslim children in a non-Muslim countries, you know, they face the danger of melting into the culture and norms of a life that uh, in many aspects, you know, uh, contradicts uh, to the teaching of Islam. And, you know, in these countries, the burden laid on Muslim parents uh, uh, becomes heavier, right? And uh, of course, you know, with that being said, a Muslim, you know, is allowed to stay in any countries which he or she practices uh, Islam and find a good environment to raise uh, his or her children uh, and is teaching. But what parents are required to do is to spare no effort in bringing their children upon the teaching of Islam. Okay, uh, so there's no excuse, you know, whether you are staying in a Muslim countries or you are staying in a non-Muslim countries, it is not an excuse because it is every parent's responsibilities. Okay, and every generation will be responsible for adhering to the teaching of Islam anyway, right? So in case of the inability to practice Islam uh, or to raise uh, children on its teaching, you know, then, um, you know, if you think that you are um, unable to 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 do what you need to do uh, as a Muslim parents, then uh, you know, uh, then if that's the case, then you know you should move to a country where you uh, or your spouse will be able to lead, um, you know, uh, the life or your family according to the Islam and its value. But you know, uh, everybody knows that it was it is just an excuse. Okay, it is just an excuse because you know, as we know that uh, in the new generations, uh, especially as the Muslim parents, right, li we live in the what we call an abundance of the information age, um, where we have a vast amount of Islamic knowledge uh, even at our fingertips, right. So don't don't give that kind of excuse, you know. So you know. When we talk about burdening sense of uh, religious uh, literacy among Muslim parents today, right? You know, we are, we often stuck uh, in a uh, outmoded. We often stuck in the uh, cultural historical method. You know, when it comes to passing this legacy of information onto our children's right. Uh, so rather than uh, acknowledge Islam in the uh, in a system that you know uh, that it is already a must themselves, you know, in terms they have to willingly adopt it. You know, um, what we can do is that uh, psychologically we can parrot the way you know of. Um, Stabbing Islam into any uh, rationalisms or uh, meaning into the language that we use to convey in, in our children. Okay, so you know this is about the inability to define Islam in a lucid, um, I would say, uh, conjoined way to our children uh, to frame this sense of purpose. And um, you know, with that being said, we, we are able to make it relevant and meaningful to their everyday. So we help them, you know, to see it, uh, to see it is like an enriching and as a whole, you know, a consistent way of life, you know, a means through which uh, to attain fulfillment. Like an example and the crush that they require when they are weathering life hardships. So um, if modern day parents and child development studies has taught us anything, uh, is that we bring our own baggage to the table of parenting, right? So anyway, indeed, you know, Allah creates children with pure in its nature, and uh, you know, whatever defects that happen let, uh, later on is the results of our bad upbringing, okay, or bad parenting, okay, because we are. You know, uh, mostly, you know, uh, failing to embrace Islam in in letter and spirits and parents for, uh, from a place of understanding uh, and learning. And, you know, uh, we are failing on our iman as well, right? And um, and our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace and uh, blessing be upon him, uh, did mention before, you know, every child is born on fitrah, okay? Uh, a man's innate dispositions of monotheism, okay? His parents make him Muslim, Jewish, or Christian, or even a fire worshipper, okay? So this is coming from Shahid, uh, Hadith, uh, Bukhari, and Muslim, okay? So this is why, you know, Islam... Um, has ordered parents to take care of their children and to bring them up according to the Islamic values or Islamic manners, right? And Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala has entrusted us parents, you know, with our children. So our children is amanah, okay? So parents bear the responsibility to raise up uh, our uh, the children in the Islamic way. And if we do that, you know, then we'll be blessed, right? Uh, you know, uh, in this life and hereafter. And if we don't, then we will get bad results, you know, uh, during our life and the uh, hereafter. So, you know, what, what, what do we mean by good um, upbringing or uh, good educations? You know, the good education means physical, okay? Man, uh, uh, it means physical, it means mental and moral preparations of your child you know so that he or she can become a good individual in the good society okay so one of the most common misuse sentence you know by the people of ummah today you know they always ask you know what can we do you know we always complain about the lack of power and impact so although this is just an excuse from taking responsibilities and doing your own bit and for that argument say you know even if we say it is okay you know you cannot make a, make an impact but there's no uh, but you know when we talk about um the other impact is that no one can deny the impact you can make on your children you know and the children that can make a change in the future yeah so uh, even our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did also mention that beware you know every one of you is a shepherd and everyone is answerable to uh, with regards of his flocks right so uh, the caliph is a shepherd um you know over the people and shall be questioned you know about his subject as to how he's conducted or uh, he conducted his affairs okay so like an example, you know, a man uh, is a guardian over the members of his family and shall be questions about them as to how he look after their physical and moral well-being. And a woman is a guardian over, you know, the household of her husband and his children and shall be questioned about them as, uh, as to how she actually managed the household and brought up the children. So this is also coming from Shahi Muslim. Okay, so our children are our amanah, which is our trust, you know, unto uh, us, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is our duty to nurture our children, okay, and it is our duty to educate them, you know, to protect them, you know, as they grow into productive adults, right? So it is very important to take some time out, you know, we ponder, you know, we reflect, you know, on the part that we are playing or we have played in our children's um, journey of life. 
Okay, so you ask yourself, you know, do your children know their relationship with Creator? You know, uh, do they know their relationship with Allah? Okay, and I remember, you know, all they, uh, all that they do will be written down, right? Remember the book, you know, and when their book is presented on the day of judgment, you know, the content will be based on the parents' work. Okay, because you have to ask yourself, you know, what are you doing to ensure that your children's book of deen, you know, will reflect the uh, righteous deeds, like an example, you know, or a good character, or true success. You know, how confident do you feel about reporting back to Allah and being able to say, you know, Allah, I have raised my children with Isan, which is excellent, you know, to the best of my ability in a and obedience to your law okay so you know when we talk about that right you know what kind of wonderful feeling will this be okay how do we perform the most important role on earth uh, you know so our children are of course you know they are the believer you know in their own right so allah gave adam choice and we must acknowledge okay uh, within and beyond their youth and our parenting you know all children will be uh you know faced with an abundance of choice you know that weaves in, in and out you know of boundaries of the halal and haram you know the beneficial and harmful but you know what's our goal you know what can we do so, you know, our goal should be, number one, is to establish the oneness in Allah in their hearts, okay? Number two is to love the prophets, okay? And number three is to strengthen them and teach their, uh, teach them their life skills, value, and uh, that will see them with adulthood, okay? So, there's a couple of tips that we can do, actually, you know, uh, very, very easy, uh, but yeah, uh, it's hard to implement, okay? But it's very, very simple, okay? Number one, you know, for you to be able to guide people, you have to master it yourself, right? Okay, at the very least, have the, you know, the basic knowledge, right? So, you have to groom yourself first. Okay, sister, brother, you have to groom yourself first, okay? Showing the values of good deeds, you know, and the effects of the individual and society. Also showing the effects on bad deeds as well. You not know, all within the child capability of understanding, okay? So, yes, you, your own self is the first action point, all right? So, you must have the basic principle of Akida uh, and Fiqh, okay? If you don't know the basic element of our deen, then how are we going to respond to our children when they ask us? And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, that they will ask at some point, right? So, our, uh, our deen actually present um, a clear and beautiful foundations, you know, uh, that govern all aspects, um, of life in a way that you know uh, it brings purity and goodness in this life and the next okay so we have to remember we have to learn and live in this order you know to help our children see the beauty of their din okay so you have to make sure that we need to seek knowledge you know you can what you can do is that you can enroll yourself or enroll um you know your spouse you know in an online or offline courses or programs that can help you with that right you know uh, if you don't know uh, basic uh, things about you know how to be a good muslim or or, or what's not you know, or, or you just want to know you know certain knowledge about islam then you know best is to enroll yourself in courses uh in, in any islamic programs like an example you know you have to get the knowledge to yourself first you know so you have to groom yourself first so that is first okay so because that is the uh, essential foundations uh you know not a secondary pursuits or luxury okay so parents should be a good example in their behavior because children like to imitate right so uh, you know children like to imitate their parents you know in their saying and their deeds okay number two you know, if you are um, uh, still having a spouse, um, you know, be in harmony with your spouse, okay? Because, I mean, the best is to first, you know, you have to choose the right partner, right? You know, as the Prophet uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did mention, is to marry based on deen and character uh, for both men and women, okay? So, this and the first, uh, earlier, the grooming yourself, um, is the basic, for, uh, I would say, basic groundwork uh, for a sound Muslim child, okay? So, when both parents have the same vision and goal, the child will have a healthy upbringing, okay? So, special reminder to men, you know, you need to be involved in raising your children. It's, it is not just enough for you to provide, you know, for their food and education and shelter and what's not, okay? So, you have to, uh, you have as much responsibility as your spouse you know to raise the righteous children you know women get to influence more of course because you know they are because of their soft nature you know they're sabar you know uh, they're very patient and they're uh, they able to spend more time with the kids but again you know the men you know need to take out time for this as well okay and then next would be number three will be you have to wisely cut what's harmful okay you know you have to cut the elect what, we, what uh, i like to call it uh electronic babysitter okay what is electronic babysitter electronic babysitter is like gadgets or television okay so like an example you know so you have to cut the electronic babysitter uh to bare minimum okay uh, and if you can do without it then the better right so two basic things which can easily influence your children's must be cut down wisely which is the televisions and gadgets okay televisions and gadgets can damage your children's creed you know beliefs and also physical health okay so firstly you have to limit the time and you have uh and uh, also you must monitor what your children watch or play you know or any uh, in any other gadgets okay so you have to work on finding alternative programs you know that will not harm their belief system and their site okay uh like an example you know you can actually monitor them to watch um you know uh, channels or to watch content such as halal children cartoon like an example or uh, documentaries or upright islamic channel like example so there's a lot more beneficial channels out there okay for them to watch and uh, also you know uh, try to get them busier with learning and being engaged in useful activities you know uh, than just you know sitting down and watching something you know um that, that doesn't benefit them okay so you have to get them busy all right and then uh the number four would be uh, you have to strengthen their iman okay so when we empower our children you know with that value and respect uh, and, and you know respect to learn to know you know, and, uh, so that uh, become, uh, will become an undog me, you know, they will begin to value and respect their Islamic uh, identity, inshallah. So, you know, what you can do with this to strengthen their iman, you have to inculcating uh, uh, their love to Allah. Inculcating means repeatedly teach, okay? So, inculcating repeated, means repeatedly teach, you know, the love to Allah, okay? So, you have, uh, I mean, when we talk about teaching the children, right? Teaching the child the religious principle and tutoring, the, uh, tutoring him in worship, you know, talking, uh, taking into account, you know, that the child capability of understanding. So, uh, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported to have said in one of the hadiths is that order your children to pray at the age of seven, okay? So, it is clearly not sufficient for parents to limit, uh, you know, the teaching and practice in Islam to ritual act of uh, worship in specific time and places 
awareness alone as it is unfortunately widespread today, right? So rather, what we can do is it is the awareness of Allah, you know, his name and his attributes and the desire to connect with Allah. Uh, it is out of love, okay? And the servitude towards Allah that must be at the uh, forefront, you know, of what is taught and applied at all times to strengthen your child identity, okay? So additionally, this self-esteem is further developed from the realizations that Allah bestowed the most noble status of his beloved servants, okay? So these concepts are further reinforced, you know, by parents through showing love, you uh, you know, by encouragement and acknowledge, uh, acknowledgement of the child, you know, and where, is, uh, and where possible possible with the additional support of like-minded company, okay? So of the core limit of Islam is to strengthen the individual both spiritually and practically uh, by placing great emphasis on collective effort, you know, uh, by the prophet, uh, prophetic model of family and community life, okay? So you have to also treat children uh, nicely and kindly, okay? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, uh, peace and blessing be upon him, but us practically, okay, when he was praying as imam, you know, this is talking about him, okay, when he was praying as an imam, you know, with the people, he was praying uh, uh, as an imam, his grandson, he has a grandson uh, by the name of uh, Al-Hasan, you know, uh, Al-Hasan is actually the son of uh, Fatima, Fatima is the daughter of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so, you know, uh, what he, uh, uh, Hassan did was, you know, uh, Hassan wrote uh, Nabi Muhammad back uh, while Muhammad, uh, Nabi Muhammad doing his uh, sujud, okay? So, while he was going. So, the, uh, our Prophet uh, Nabi Muhammad SAW, you know, uh, like, uh, then what he did is he actually like uh, lengthened his uh, sujud, okay? So, when he finished his prayer, right, you know, um, some of the uh, attending companions uh, did ask him, you know, uh, you lengthen your uh, uh, solat or you lengthen your... Um, uh, bow and then the uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, answered that my grandson uh, wrote on my back and I hate hassling him. Okay, so one of the important things that parents must teach their children is to choose the good company and to avoid the bad one as well. So because children are always influenced by the company that they keep, you know the bad behavior can be easily transmitted uh, through bad company. And then next would be a uh, role model. Okay, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam, you know, is the best of all role models. Okay, you know what we can do. You know, I make a mistake before. You know, as a parents, I have three boys. Okay, uh, three teenage boys now. You know, they are in their teenage. But you know, while um they are younger, you know uh. You know what I did is you know as a young uh, uh young parents as well you know um you know I was uh, following trend right you know I, I wanted to be the best you know I wanted to do the best you know for my kids you know when they were babies or when they were toddlers okay so um I wasn't really uh into um uh, Islamic uh ways on how to really you know um look after my kids and, and stuff like that you know um so so what I did is uh, I bought I mean as I'm very excited uh you know young parents you know I actually bought a lot of storybooks I bought uh, a lot of uh, what we call it uh, fairy tales books you know uh, what we you know consider as um bedtime story uh storybooks okay for our bedtime storytelling activities so what I regret now is that I shouldn't have followed the western way you know because that was uh because that that was very wrong of me to 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 start with right so um I, sh I should have done the otherwise, you know, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, you have to read stories. I mean, we have to to, to ensure that the kids learn, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and get their Islamic identity, you know, even when they are young, right, as young as possible, right, you know. So when they are younger, you know, what I need, what I should be doing is that I need to read them stories about our Islamic, um, you know, perhaps our prophets or, uh, you know, uh, his companions or even talking about Islamic uh, stories and histories and all this. Uh, but, you know, I did it, I did the otherwise, you know, I was doing, uh, I mean, I was, I was uh, you know, spending time, in, you know, reading fairy tales and all this, so. It was very unnecessary. I thought I was doing uh, better than other parents, you know, because I spent a lot of time with my kids. But um, I guess I was wrong. Okay, I was wrong. So, you know, we read, you you guys have to, I mean, ladies, uh, you know, brother or sister, you know, you have to read stories uh, about, uh, you know, our prophet, uh, like an example, you know, to, to your children uh, so that they will follow, uh, you know, our prophet sunnah uh, with love, right? You know, we have to read stories about them, about, you know, our prophets and their sahabat. Yeah, you know, we don't share fairy tales uh, and make the children live in a dreamland, okay? Because, um... You know, it, it doesn't it doesn't uh, mean anything you know um so you know by by talking about or by by you know um uh, reading stories about you know our prophets or our uh you know prophet sahaba you know uh, we actually um tell them stories of the sacrifices of these heroes in islam you know so that they will have that vision okay we have to teach them from an early age you know about um you know all these great people you know hence um you know the great heroes of islam you know their great sacrifices and effort for the sake of allah okay so because if we develop them um in them uh, you know a love for islam and provide them with righteous uh, example you know for their heroes they are less likely to go astray right as we see nowadays you know children wants to be like their heroes right so if they admire the shahaba and uh shahabiyat you know like abu bakar like example like umar or ibn abbas you know, or aisha even you know they are more uh, than likely to emulate them and remain still uh, Take fast upon their religion, right? So, uh, inshallah, that will definitely happen. Okay. So many of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, also were either in the prime of their youth or children who grew up in his company. So their biography, uh, biographies, uh, right? You know, they provide an abundance of uh, fruits uh, from which uh, you know will be able to nourish you know young uh, minds and to, uh, to uh, what I would say encourage them to emulate uh, uh, emulate uh, the you know praiseworthy character and traits and 
uh, we say conduct these uh, phenomenal role models who are among the best of humanity okay so uh, that's the mistake that i have done uh, you know uh, during my uh, time so don't make the same mistake again uh, what you can do is to uh, get yourself um, uh, prepared with a proper um, resources okay and it's also for the sake of your children okay and then next will be teach them islam through good example okay through your good example okay you must teach your children how to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by you by you practicing and learning and growing in your deen as well with them so you know you have to teach them the five pillars of islam you know through how much um how much you are committed to them and in a full comprehensive uh, comprehensive uh, comprehensions of their meaning and blessing okay also you have to let them learn and memorize the quran you know but be part of this journey as well so you know um you have to be their companion okay and their role model is you know of making instead of making them feel like you know you uh, you want them to to do something unrealistic or unattainable because you know when you uh told them what to do then they will say that uh look you know if i'm doing that why you are not doing so um uh, are you testing me or you know is this something that it is uh, not attainable uh for you that's the reason why you're asking me to do it or or what you know so you know let go of all these um thoughts coming up from your kids then as well you do it together with them okay and then are uh, we talking about uh you no know, uh, when we talk about islamic routine right you know um in life okay in, in our household you know we have many routines for our children you know including morning routines school routines homework bedtime and what's not right okay so how much but you know you you have to ask yourself you know you have to ask your uh, spouse as well you know sit down and ask uh, you know uh, each other how much emphasis that you know do we put on islamic routines okay you have to take some time out you know to draw an islamic routine for your children that look like uh, like an example okay number one you, uh, you know the routine of teaching your children to stay awake after fajar or after subuh okay depending on the solar time during the year okay and then you have to also you know get the routine of um uh example of uh, reading or memorizing a portion of the quran in the morning or in the evening and then the routine of them to reflect uh, on what verse of the quran or hadith every day like an example or the routine to get them in the habit of reading the du'as of our prophets and uh, or you know in a way like you know uh, to read them before going to bed or waking up from sleep or uh, you know during eating and etc you know these are uh, routines okay uh, or like an example you know get your children to choose a hadith uh, or du'a once a week you know and stick it up on the wall with uh, with its meaning for the whole family to learn you know so like an example so uh you know how much do we uh, actually implement this islamic routine into our children's uh, 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 daily activities okay so you have to ask yourself and if you have not then start implementing okay and don't forget to reward the kids okay don't forget to reward the kids okay and uh, next would, uh, would be to establish the extreme important of solat okay the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once said that teach your children to pray when they are seven and punish them for neglecting uh, uh, neglecting the solat uh, or neglecting the pray when they reach the age of 10 Okay, so this is coming from Shahi Abu Daud. Okay, so be punctual with your solat. Okay, get into the habit of praying at the earliest hours and you have to teach this to your children, you know, and they themselves will become more likely to be punctual in everything else that they do. Okay, so you have to make prayer, um, like an example, you know, a family event, like an example, and even if the children are not of age, you know, uh, for them to be, uh, you know, obligated to, to, to pray, then at least let them join in or sit quietly, you know, let them observe you, okay, so that, you know, when uh, the solat uh, becomes obligatory for them, upon them, you know, they are already very firm and ready to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, then with also full concentration, which is kushu, okay, so with routines, right, you know, children learn to be independent and consistent, okay, so we need to teach them to learn to wait, you know, uh, we also need to teach them, uh, you know, uh, to be helpful and be patient, okay, thereby developing a solid, uh, tolerance level for patient okay and then next would be to strengthen them mentally okay uh like example you know when we talk about grit okay grit is actually like a mental toughness or uh, perseverance okay it is actually the number one crucial um determiner of a uh, true strength and overall success okay be it your muslim or non-muslim you know you need to have the grit okay grit g-r-i-t okay it's mental toughness and perseverance so we need to work on mental strengths uh for our children as much as their physical strength okay so many of the most successful people like i said mentioned earlier you know whether they are islamically uh, or in this world are succeeding and reaching high not because they pop a golden pills but, be uh, but because they develop a gift right uh, oh sorry develop grits okay so uh, you know, when we talk about mental toughness, you know, this mental toughness uh, actually serves as the foundations of their perseverance, you know, and consistency in uh, moving towards their goal, you know, instead of quitting early or uh, like an example, you know, instead of quitting early or uh, trying something else, you know, uh, or assuming that they weren't uh, talented enough. So, you know, we have to make sure that uh, we have all the supports that we are able to give them, you know, to build up their grip, okay? And then next would be foster a strong sense of identity, you know, before occupying ourselves, you know, with whether our kids, you know, have eaten a proper breakfast or whether they are, you know, too warm or too cold, you know, with whatever that they are wearing, you know, or, um, you know, um, I would say, you know, how well or poorly that they are doing things academically you know we need to ask ourselves you know just just take a moment and ask ourselves you know does my child feel comfortable in his own skin you know are our children comfortable being a muslim do they know uh, what they believe in and why you know and fostering a strong sense of identity starts you know when our children are young right so make their faith a source of comfort love and aspirations okay only then they will embrace uh their uh, muslim identities you know without discomfort or resentment so you know like an example you know if you are um current uh, if you are celebrating it's uh it's okay uh, like an example um Hari Raya, you know you're celebrating it's you know then you have to make a meaningful celebrations for them you know let them feel the joy and ease of their faith instead of feeling judged or false like an example so you know this is this is uh, a small thing that you can do you know and to uh, help them to foster a very strong identity of being a muslim okay 
Like an example also, you know, help them to find a second home in a mosque uh, by uh, maybe creating fun and welcoming programs for them, right? So like an example, you have uh, created a routine that, you know, every day, you know, they have to go to the mosque, like, uh, so to, to contribute or to give zakat, you know, even if it is 10 cent or 50 cent, like an example, okay? So this is something that we can do, okay? We can do to help our children foster a strong sense of identity to being a Muslim, okay? So, you know, one of the most important contributions, you know, we can make to nurturing our children's identity is to ensure that they have uh, a good like-minded companion, okay? So it's important to make an effort, you know, to connect with other strong Muslim, um, like example, strong Muslim families, you know, whose kids can become companion for yours, okay? So teach them to love, um, you know, uh, your own identity, you know, but also teach them to navigate and how to deal with non-Muslim, okay? Because we cannot expect them to be isolated, right? So, you know, uh, the Prophet, even, even our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did live among the non-Muslim, right? And live by, and he lived by example, you know, such a... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very amazed with our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, so he dealt with, you know, the non-Muslim very justly, you know, very nice, you know, he's very uh, fair and stuff like that and he actually keeps his promise to them too. Okay, so his character is is just amazed, uh, amazing, you know, uh, in Islam, okay. And then uh, next what we can do is that to establish an Islamic identity at home. Okay, the most important place to begin is shaping a child's uh, Muslim identity is the home. Okay, uh, so you have to also ask yourself, does your family routine and home reflect your belief and uh, convictions? Uh, so um, perhaps another question that you might um, ask yourself, you know, what is it about your home that differentiates itself from your non-Muslim neighbor's home? Uh, so uh, or uh, another example of questions that you might ask yourself, you know, how much Islam is part of your daily rhythm? Uh, so because why children need a tangible item to connect them to their faith, right? So try living close to the masjid if possible, you know, so the azan can be heard, you know, or at least it should be heard from your smartphone, like an example, okay? So let them see uh, you make your wudu and pray, you know, you teach them about your sunnah and the prophets pertaining to food and drinks um, and, and what's not. So there's uh, quite a number of things that you can do at home too, okay? To establish an uh, Islamic identity at home, okay? And then next would be uh, do not frighten them, okay? Do not raise your children with fear of speech as this will cripple the child's mind, okay? Another calamity that we have fallen is that we scare our children, uh, you know, just to keep them under control, right? So we scare them, you know, from darkness or from devils or what's not. So, um, you know, uh, our Prophet uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions that it's not lawful um, for a Muslim to frighten another, uh, it is not lawful for a Muslim to frighten another Muslim from Sunan um, uh, Abi Dawood, but all in we are all, uh, we are raising our children uh, who are scared uh, in terms of hampering their growth, okay? So we need to raise a fearless men and women uh, who are only scared to Allah and no one, you know, which is nothing else that will result uh, in them doing the right things in the face of the uh, adversity, okay? So we need to keep on reminding them that uh, uh, that they are Muslim and that Muslim are not scared of anything or anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? And the next is help or push them to become brave, okay? You know, just for uh, just the opposite of what it is said, uh, said earlier, you know, instead of scaring them, you know, we should be working hard, you know, to make them brave, you know? So you have to help them, push them to become men or women who will bravely stand for justice and to help the deen uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? Because um, they were shahabah, right? Uh, uh, were taking in a part of battle in the age of 15 like uh, Usama bin Zaid, like an example, you know, in fact, he was appointed as a commander, you know, of an army for, uh, for an uh, expedition uh, when he was 18 to, if I'm not wrong, 20 years old, okay? So, the, uh, he's, um, you know, and, and our great uh, scholars of Islam, which is Ibn Abbas, is another great example of how he was uh, a part of the Shura Council of Omar, okay? So, this is the only possible when we work to make them brave, okay, responsible and righteous, okay? And then next would be, we have to teach them to speak up and stand for justice, okay? Making, not, making our children free to talk will ensure a transparent mind. So, provide our children with healthy environment, you know, uh, for discussions and learning, okay? We have, uh, we have to always tell them to stand um, uh, to stand for justice among siblings or among cousins or among family you know, or even outside, okay? And we have to reward them when we see an act of courage uh, that they have done for justice, okay? We have to acknowledge and we have to reward them, okay? And then next would be validate questions or concern, okay? Children, they might be small, you know, but their questions are big. Okay, so we have to validate their questions or concerns that uh, they may have about Islam. You know, so we have to try to answer them in a way that is simple for a child to understand. Okay, so this isn't always easy, but you do not want to dismiss uh, their questions completely. Okay, if a child left feeling unsatisfied or confused, then they will not have a very strong conviction. Okay, so when they are able to understand uh, a concept, then it becomes easy for them to accept and then love for their faith. Okay, and uh, next would be condone a victim mentality. Okay, not being selected in a competition, like an example. Okay, or falling in a test or getting cut from the team doesn't make a child a victim. Okay, disappointment, failure, and rejections are part of our. Uh, our a part of life, okay? So no matter uh, no matter how unjust or tough the circumstances is, you know, refuse to attend your kids' pity parties, okay? Uh, what I mean is we have to teach them the importance of taking positive actions rather than indulging in self-pity, okay? We have to teach them to try harder the next time as hard work is always be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's the most just, okay? And then next would be prepare them for responsibilities, okay? We have to keep reminding the children that they are to take responsibility in the future. So along with their personal responsibility, make sure to instill in them, uh, you know, the sense of responsibility towards the ummah and the people in need, okay? So whenever they, they see somebody in need, you know, tell them to work Hard, uh, so that in future they are able to help others and that Allah will reward those who help others greatly. So um, this is like um, just one uh, example, you know, how uh, you know, uh, the way we, we act you know, on, on, on certain things. Like an example, you know, we went out uh, with our kids uh, for dinner and then we realized that we saw, um, you know, um, someone working as a cleaner, like an example, and we tell our kids, you know, instead of telling our kids that, hey, you know, uh, uh, this is what happened when you don't study, you, you the, the first sentence, uh, this is what happened when you don't study, you become a cleaner. 
uh, and then the second uh, the second thing is that uh, or uh, you know uh, instead of saying that you, what you can tell your kids is that you know um, you have to study hard so that you know you can help the cleaner in the future okay so we bring each other up okay instead of you tell your kids that you know uh this is the reason why that's the reason why you're scaring the kids you know, or you are you are um i would say that that is not a good example you know the way uh, the way you say things uh, the way you try to 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 motivate your kids is not the right way okay so if you want to, to, to do that you do it properly you know in a better way you know so that's yeah uh prepare them for responsibility you know when they whenever they see someone in need you have to tell them to work harder in future or to work hard in the future so that they are able to help others and that allah will reward uh, those uh, who help others you know uh, greatly right and then uh next would be to strengthen them physically okay like an example doing an outdoor activities okay so um Please get your children, you know, involved in physical activities, okay? You have to restrict the video games to a small part of their time, if it is all, and encourage them to play outside, okay? So because kids need physical activity to build their strength, you know, to build their coordinations and confidence, okay? You know, when we talk about the sense, the sense, and the natural factor, you know, uh, that really helps in strengthening their body. Um, and their immune, immune system along with increasing their strength and endure, endurance, okay? So when kids are active, you know, their bodies, uh, you know, can do the thing they want to do and uh, the need uh, them to do, okay? So physically active kids, uh, you know, also most um, or more likely to be motivated, focused and successful, okay? And mastering physical skills build confidence at every age, okay? So we have to teach our, ch uh, our children um, in terms of, you know, the outdoor, uh, all kind of outdoor activities. We have to get them to do uh, all kind of outdoor activities, you know, such as perhaps swimming, you know, horse riding or gardening or enroll them in you know, physical activities like uh, karate or uh, football and other games. Uh, you know that we build their strength and stamina okay and then next will be nutrients uh, okay so our, um our focus is you know would be uh to work hard you know mothers like us right you know our focus is uh we'll be able to work hard you know to cook and provide uh food for our children's right but with the changing trends you know shortage of time um for uh or, or so as it is perceived you know and readily available food uh, or snacks you know we have uh you know that, that we have you know given up making making the efforts right and uh you know we commonly see that children today it's uh you know so much sugar and processed food you know which are greatly unhealthy so another unhealthy habit commonly seen is that we focus on filling the children's you know by making them to watch tv and mobile phone or do get uh, or you know uh, playing their gadgets you know um while eating so this is done so that we can get it uh get things over done right you know we as soon as possible you know this kind of thing and you know and then we are we are then free to do our own things you know but you no know, we, we think about it okay think about it this is more often that are not resulting in overeating which is unhealthy for the children's too okay so it is not easy to go all organic like an example you know but do cut down as much as possible all processed and junk food okay and we have to uh, make them eat their portions in time but uh, also never allow them uh, overeating uh, or eating just to kill time okay and make them eat healthy and on time i always tell myself this okay uh, when we talk about halal and uh, halal for iban you know we already eating halal food that's great great to hear okay we only focus on having halal food but when we talk about halal food and you know what kind of halal food are you giving your kids the halal food or halal for iban food Okay, is this food that we are actually providing to our kids uh, the food that, um, you know, um, uh, that, that benefit them or the food that will harm them? Okay, irregardless, halal is still halal, but is it koi or not? Okay, so try, you know, because we, we want them to implement, right? We want them to uh, to implement, you know, Islamic ways, right? So then the more we should, we should be, you know, also monitoring what kind of food that we, you know, allow our kids to, be, uh, to, to consume, you know. Uh, you know, if we already start with halal, good, you know, then let's make it koi. So uh, to make it toy, then we have to avoid food that uh, will harm our kids, you know, be, uh, you know, when we talk about our food that harm our kids will be the junk food, like an example, uh, the gassy drinks, like an example. Okay, so we make it a toy, you know, halal for even food. Okay, so we can do that. Okay, so make them eat healthy and make them eat on time. Okay, so the next would be volunteer. Okay, so once our children feel comfortable with our Muslim community, you know, we should then expand, uh, you know, into our community as a whole. So volunteering, you know, is an excellent way to teach, uh, you know, our children to be productive citizens. Okay, so doing good for others, you know, gives children a sense of accomplishment, right? So relates to them the ayat or hadith, you know, how Allah is pleased with them because of all this. Okay, and then next would be let them work for it. Okay, whatever it is that they desire, you make sure that they are required to put uh, forth a little effort, okay, and endure some type of sacrifice to get it, okay. So whether it's giving up their free time to earn the extra money, you know, for a purchase or putting in extra work to get some candies, like an example, you know, the sooner your children, um, I would say internalize, you know, this truth, the better equipped then uh, they'll become, you know, to overcome the obstac uh, obstacles and uh, achievements, right. And then, of course, uh, next would be make dua for them. You know, as a parents, you know, it goes without saying that we need to constantly make dua for our children, right? It was the practice of the Prophet, uh, you know, uh, like uh, Prophet Ibrahim uh, wasalam, and Prophet Muhammad uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay? So one of the goal of Muslim parents is to have a pious children that will pray for them once they have left this world, right? So can you say your children will, will remember to make dua for you when you have gone? So you have to, you know, pray to the Most High, uh, you know, uh, you have to pray to Allah, you know, to bless, uh, for, for Allah to bless and protect our children, you know, as Allah taught us in the Quran to supplicate uh, this um, couple of very short surah, okay? Number one. Rabbi ajalni mukima salati wa min duriyati rabbana wa taqabbal du'a rabbana hab lana min ajwajina wa duriyatin kurata ayunin wa ja'alna lil muttaqin imam okay so the um 
this uh, dua means uh, my lord uh, make me and establish uh, establish a prayer uh, and many from my descendants okay our lords uh, accept my supplications our lords grant us from amongst our wife and our offspring comfort for our eyes and make us uh, an example for the righteous okay so when you pray you know when you pray you know you are submitting to allah uh, uh, and handling your children's care to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Okay, so we have mistakes. You know, as our parents, we definitely make a mistake. You know, uh, some uh, I would I would like to you know to point out some of the mistakes that we have done. Okay. One of it is being paranoid parents, okay? You know, because of the internet and the level of crime that we see, you know, and, you know, we we as a parents have become very paranoid, right? You know, the level of crime has not uh, greatly increased, you know, uh, uh, from our childhood to this day, you know, it is almost the same, but in this age of social media, right? So we are able to see everything that is happening, you know, in our community, in our city, in our countries, you know, in the continent on, of the, on, on the world, you know, which make us paranoid and we are scared of our children going out to play, right? You know, parents today, you know, uh, most of them prefer their children uh, in front of their eyes, uh, you know, all the time, you know, which results in video games or TV or internet browsing and all, you know, uh, the, the harmful effect of that right but this doesn't mean that you do not have to worry at all you know it is that doesn't mean you don't have to worry at all even when they are in front of you okay because as a muslim we take precautions and with our call on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we should teach our children about safety you know about dealing with strangers you know uh, and how to safeguard themselves so we should ensure that they are play, uh, that they are playing areas that they are safe and they also have tawakal in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we take shortcut to avoid discomfort okay so although giving in when your children's uh you know wines or wines or, or giving them smartphones or tv or you know doing your kids stores for them uh you know make, make uh, life easier right now right but those shortcuts will backfire you okay those shortcuts will backfire you so you have to implement delayed gratifications and show your children that you're strong enough to stay on the course okay you will teach them they are strong enough to reach their long-term goal you know despite the temptations uh to take the easy way out okay and being lenient in islamic matters uh you know and, and strict or, or, uh, or stern for worldly matters okay so um you know when we talk about making children is to discipline um to, to discipline them it's a common part uh, of the world right and uh, you know whether or not um you are from the one who smacked their children the sad part is that the ummah today in a uh, sterner in punishment for worldly matters like studies and, and what's not okay but lenient when it comes to islamic matters you know we need to make them realize that it is really a bigger deal when they disobey allah and the consequences are going to be worse if they do something un-islamic okay like the prophet advised to punish or smack the children for prayer when they are 10 years old okay this helped them to become more mindful of allah and better human beings as a whole uh, you know as islam is a way of life and will be the guiding light okay so the next mistake is that we do not let them question us okay the first mistake is uh we the first mistake is you know we are paranoid right and the next mistake is that we do not let them question us okay oh well, see the thing is that uh, why, why this is a mistake is because although children are expected to obey you but allow them you have to allow them to question you and make sure that you will explain to them okay or it will lead them to not question the authority and just so be, uh, they will become weak uh and a pushover okay so then uh and then the next mistake is being overprotective okay we see around us now that you know parents have become so overprotective okay during our childhood it was common for our adults relatives you know to tease us or to trouble us and we were supposed to react right uh, you know but we also behave you know but now we see the parents interfere okay so in fact you know they take offense you know it can be like you know tempting to shield kids uh from hurts and feeling and hard time but hardship is part of life you have to teach the kids that hardship is part of life okay kids need their first-hand experience dealing with uncomfortable emotions okay with your support they can gain confidence in themselves and trust that they will handle uh, that they can handle in whatever difficulties uh you know that life throws in their way okay so common mistake too is such that letting your kids avoid responsibilities and one of the biggest problem of the Ummah parents today is that everyone is ex uh, expecting someone else to make a difference, okay? No one is taking responsibilities. And the thing is that we need to raise our children who would take responsibility and uh, build blocks for stronger Ummah. So, countless studies, you know, show the importance of getting kids involved in household chores, like an example. Yet, only a few percent of children do chores, okay? Uh, like my kids, okay? We actually train them to do chores at the uh, age of six years old, okay? And already some parents call it abuse. Boom! You know? <laughs> well, then again, you know, uh, this is what I mean by, you know, um, biggest problem is such a bigger uh, it is the biggest problem in the umar society you know uh, no one is willing to to to, uh, to to teach their children the meaning of responsibility okay so yeah only only a few percent of children who do chores because only a few parents believe that you know teaching kids while they're young supposedly helps them in terms of um guiding them on how uh, when it comes to you know life skills or surviving skills or even you know uh, being responsible uh you know being responsible and and what's not okay only a few parents believe that Okay, only a few parents, you know, the rest of the parents were like, no, it's an abuse, you know, you don't tell your kids to, to, to even mop the floor, even help you with the laundry, you know, it's an abuse, you know. Anyway, back to that, okay. Example, okay, let them pack their own lunches, okay, assign their daily chores, okay, and expect them to take care of their own equipment for their whatever hobbies, okay. Giving them the comfort of the world, the parents listen, okay, those parents that say it is an abuse, okay, listen, giving the kids the comfort of the world is not only going to make them lazy, and will only make them difficult to face, uh, you know, for them to face the world in the future, okay? Just because you have money to, uh, to um, have a domestic helper, like an example, you know? Uh, now, that doesn't mean when your kids, um, uh, when, when your kids grow up or, uh, you know, uh, grow older or when your kids are big enough to, uh, to be independent by themselves, they would have the, uh, the money to, to even hire a helper, okay? So, you give them the comfort of the world now, what then, you know, what are you teaching your kids? 
Okay, what are you teaching the kids? You know, are you teaching them being responsible? Or are you teaching them the, the life skills that they needed to be dependent on others? Because you are doing that. Okay, the more you keep on giving, the more you keep on giving, the more you keep on giving, this is what happened. Kids think that it is okay. It is okay to not do and uh, to not be responsible of what they need to do, uh, you know, to, to, to do whatever that they want to do. It is okay because they have been trained since they were young to be dependent on others. It is okay to be spoon fed by others. It is okay to ask for um favors all the time. It is okay because you fail. You fail as a parent because you think that it is okay to give every single comfort to your kids, you know, without uh without thinking that, you know, is this something that will teach my kids, you know, uh, it become a habit or, you know, uh, will this, you know, uh, prevent my kids uh, uh, for being, uh, you know, uh, you know, a responsible person or responsible adults in the future, you don't have that kind of thinking. Hence, the reason why you're giving. Giving and keep giving. Have some mercy on your kids, please. Have some mercy. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to stay alive till, you know, we, you don't know uh, You don't know when you're going to die. You know, you don't know when you're going to leave your kids. You don't know if your saving is more than enough for your kids to stay, uh, you know, the way he was being brought up before. Okay? Think about it. Okay? Do some self-reflections, parents. Okay? <laughs> When we talk about that, you know, uh, if we tell our children, you know, if we tell the children to stop doing something uh, that, uh, you know, uh, reminding them that, you know, what will people uh, think also, including their father, mother, grandfather, etc., you know, uh, you know, we always forgotten this also. You know, we always forgotten to remind them what people think, you know, with every actions that they do. You know, if we tell the children to stop doing something, reminding them of what people think of them, you know, then they will be uh, consciously align themselves, you know, to do those things when no one is able to see them. Trust me, okay? They will do it, okay? So tell them what will Allah think, okay? He is the all seen, the all knower, okay? Make them always be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? So, in summary, to, to end this video, I'm going to uh, explain five stages. Uh, there's, there's few stages in life, okay? Which is already been explained by Quran. Example, you know, childhood is the age of playing. You know, adolescence is the age of entertainment. And youth is the age of seeking luxury and beauty. And finally, adulthood and uh, uh, adulthood is actually the age of excessive uh, ambitions for properties and offspring, okay? So the first three stages are when the child passes through the actual training period, okay? He seeks knowledge and behavior from parents and surrounding. And in the next two stages, he will apply all that he found, whatever that he found, okay? So Islam guides us on how to train the child in these three crucial stages. Okay, so from Hadith, uh, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions that play with them, you know, for the early, uh, for the early sev uh, seven years, then teach them for the next seven years, and then advise them for the next seven years. Okay, so play, teach, and advise. Okay, so the first stage is when the child uh, is live from birth to seven years old. Okay, it's the time of loving and playing with the child. Okay, so these are the foundation years, uh, you know, for a whole life. Okay, so parents child connections build up in these years. Okay, if this, in these years, right, there's no need to burden. There's no need to burden children for learning as he learns by observing and gets influenced by surrounding. Okay, so you have to take special care, you know, showing love and affections and playing with the child are uh, pretty much vital steps. Okay, you have to smile, you know, with him, you know, you have to show him uh, that earth is a beautiful place to live. Okay, until they are seven. Okay. And then we come to the second stage. The second stage is from 7 years old to 14 years old, okay? It is time for direct training, okay? Guide child for uh, right and wrong. You know, guide them for ethics, you know, moral values and Islamic teaching, okay? At this stage, children are ready to learn for logical reasoning and Islamic affairs or sorry, Islamic ethics, okay? Teach them how to behave, you know, how to make decisions, what is halal, what is haram, okay? And you have to encourage them to participate, so like an example, in outdoor activities such as sports, like an example, you have to teach them how to draw boundaries to their behaviors, you know, and also set rules and guidelines to act positively in every situation, okay? So this is the time to train children by example, you know, uh, stories softly and by punishment if needed, okay? And the third stage is to start when the child hits 14 up to 21 years old, okay? So in these years, the child has grown up completely and has an independent personality. And the child now has a roadmap in his mind, okay? Now is the time to advise the child, okay? You, so you have to establish a trust, uh, trustful relationship with them. And then what you can do is that, you know, be a friend of them. You know, you have to be their friend uh, so that they can be uh, confidently share their experience, you know, problems and challenges and be available for them to guide them and help them whenever they're stuck, you know? So... That is are uh, the three stages that you have to remember, okay? Uh, the first stage is, uh, you know, you have to show them love and uh, and, and what's not, uh, you know, uh, uh, from, you know, from uh, 0 to 7 years old. And then from 7 to 14 years old, you have to uh, guide, okay? Uh, guide what's right and what's wrong. You have to, you know, uh, guide them when it comes to ethics, uh, moral values, and our Islamic teaching. And then from 14, uh, that is for 7 to 14 years old. So then 14 to uh, up to 21 years old, then this is the time you have to be friend to your kids, okay? This is the time where they have grown up uh, and complete uh, and independent. Uh, you know, they have uh, become an independent, you know. So, you know, they also have an independent personality. So, you know, it is only the right time to advise the child. So, you have to become friends with them. So, be a friend to them so that they can confidently share their experience, you know, share their problems and challenges with you. So, you know, uh, be available, to, uh, you know, for them to guide them and help them when they're stuck, you know. So, uh, you know, to, to end this um, video, you know, may Allah make us focus on the Akira and put our main efforts to make all children better, not just for their own good, but for us and, uh, you know, as uh, the children will be the main source of uh, sawab ijaria to our parents, okay, or for the parents or for us parents, okay. Uh, may Allah bless us and hope this video beneficial to all of us. Amin, 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 ya rabbal alamin.